so welcome to the seminar. It's very important uh, that you're here, and we're very pleased that you've been able to join us in looking at the questions of active citizenship and lobbying, what we do, why we do it, and how we can do it better. For Oxfam, all of the work that we do is intended to end poverty and injustice. And in doing that, we always look not just at the experience of women and girls, men and boys on the front line around the world, but the policies and the programs of governments that actually create and perpetuate poverty. And for that reason, then the whole question of active citizenship and how we try and influence governments and have governments change their policies and procedures and programs is absolutely integral to our strategy for making change. We have a system that uh, is imperfect, there's no question. Uh, there are many of us who are quite cynical about our ability to influence politicians and there are many people who are cynical about the ability of politicians to affect change. And yet we've seen in many, many instances that by speaking directly to elected representatives and having them understand that these are concerns that Canadians share, that we have expectations of them, that we see that government has a responsibility to act, then we can make a real change. We talk about a rights-based approach to development. We talk about the fact that people on this planet have rights as citizens and as human beings. And when we look at rights, we also look at the role of governments as duty bearers, as those who have an obligation to create the conditions that allow us to exercise our rights. And so it is very important in that context that we hold governments to account, that we hold governments to take the actions that ensure that we as individuals on this planet can um, fully enjoy our rights. And we recognize that there are different power dynamics, both in the North and the South, uh, as to who has power and how those with power use their power or abuse their power and how those with less power can hold people with power to account. And so we also recognize that those of us in the North have an obligation not just through the actions that we take within our own countries but also um, the support that we provide to governments in the South in order that they can fulfill their responsibilities with respect to their citizens. So. Um, Today, you're going to be hearing more about why we, why we lobby, how we lobby. In doing that, it's really important to recognize that on a lot of the issues that you talk to elect, elected representatives about, you know more about that issue than they do. Uh, yes, they are elected representatives. Yes, they have at their fingertips a wide range of, experience, of, of, of information and resources. But at the same time, um, on, a, on any given day, on any given issue, you're more likely to be as well informed as they and have some really critical arguments that they haven't thought much about. And so when you have an opportunity to meet face to face with them, you have an opportunity to open their minds, to bring attention to their attention information they may not know, and to make very clear to them that this matters to you as a citizen within their constituency and within their country. And that is absolutely critical because one of the biggest barriers that we face is the arrogance of politicians, their assumption that we don't know about these issues, their assumption that we don't care about these issues. And so when we uh, shatter that illusion, then we can be a powerful force for change. So I wish you well and look forward to meeting you, meeting an MP in the near future.